The novel coronavirus infections and deaths continue to soar throughout Europe despite restrictions imposed by governments to try to curb the pandemic. Britain registered nearly 27,000 new infections in the past 24 hours. 462 more people also died throughout that same time period. Italy reported over 37,000 new infections and 541 deaths. Russia's daily infections also hit an all-time high with nearly 23,000 new cases. The country's total tally stands currently at over 1.9 million infections. Poland also reported a record high of 548 new deaths. A surge in cases has led to a new wave of lockdowns across Europe. Austria says it will move from its current nighttime coronavirus curfew and partial shutdown to a full lockdown from Tuesday until December the 6th. Greece also announced the closure of nurseries and primary schools until the end of November. Meanwhile, German police have used uh, water cannons to disperse protesters during a protest against lockdown measures in Frankfurt. Uh, police said the rally was broken up after protesters repeatedly disregarded distancing uh, guidelines. Protests was attended by hundreds of people from a Kirdenker movement, which uh, opposes the uh, government's measures to contain spread of COVID-19. Police clashed with a group of counter-protesters who blocked the route of the rally several times. The German health minister has warned the event, uh, that even pardon with the current stringent measures lowering the infe infection rate will take quite a long time. The country has so far reported over 788,000 coronavirus cases with more than 12,000 deaths. And now joining us for this news review is Max Chivili, Press TV correspondent from Rowe, and Bijan Tavasoli, member of Germany's uh, left uh, party, joining us out of Hamburg. Gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you both to the program. I guess uh, we'll start with our Press TV correspondent there, Max. Give us the latest out of Rome, bud. Well, uh, Italy continues to struggle with a, with a worsening coronavirus situation in, in many parts of the country. Uh, the, the, the regions of Campania and Tuscany uh, uh, were designated as high-risk red zones. Today, two more uh, regions declared red zones. Three more regions, uh, uh, the Emilia-Romagna, Friuli and Marche, went from being yellow to medium-risk orange zones. Uh, as you said before, we had 37,000 new COVID-19 cases uh, today, but there have been uh, there were um, uh, 41,000 new infections recorded yesterday. Mm. It was the, the highest toll uh, in the second wave of coronavirus, and uh, and uh, and there are now over 30,000 patients in in hospital with symptoms, and and this is very worrying. Uh, health authorities have repeatedly warned that hospitals across the entire country and particularly in hard hit areas such as Milan and, and Naples are struggling to cope with, uh, uh, with a large number of patients. Uh, consider that uh, uh, in, in, in Rome, um, we also have here in Rome medical beds uh, um, have been lacking uh, in the last few days and, and there's been a blockade of, of ambulance at the entrance of emergency rooms in the north, uh, um, intensive care units are struggling uh, with receiving uh, more and more uh, patients. So they have at this stage about 800 patients in intensive care. And, and this is very worrying considering uh, uh, that uh, uh, the health system is starting to be overwhelmed. Thank you, Max. And uh, Bijan, I'd like to welcome you to the program. Uh, tell us what's going on in Germany. The situation in Germany is similarly dire as in Italy, and uh, it's getting worse by the day. On um, Monday, the government, the federal government, will reconvene with the heads of the 16 Bundesländer to decide on how to continue with the so-called current lockdown light, uh, which is uh, scheduled to go on for the rest of November. And as it stands now, the numbers do not seem to be low enough that uh, um, any measures can be changed um, so far. 
So uh, there's even discussions of increasing the measures, as we have seen in Austria, for example, where they're now moving from a so-called lockdown light to a hard lockdown, where the life in public is really diminished. And with the current cases increasing, hospitals are projected to actually reach capacity, and so some other non-essential operations are not going to be scheduled anymore, which is a great problem for the German healthcare system. And, and Bijan, what are the Germans doing right? Because you look at the rest of you, I mean, you look at Spain, you look at Italy, you look at France, you look at the UK, they're all over 30, 40,000 deaths and counting. Uh, you look at Iran, same thing. So, but you look at Germany, they only have what, about 12,500 deaths so far. So tell me, what is Berlin doing that the rest of the world isn't? Well, it's two factors. First of all, it's uh, blind luck. You talked about Iran. Iran was one of the first countries to be hit by the epidemic after China. And uh, Germany had much more time to react. The politicians in Berlin didn't make maximum use of that time. But if you have time to react, that plays a role. And the second factor, which is not talked about so much, is the structure of families. In the southern European states, many families live together. You live together with your grandparents, for example. And that is considered a family tradition in southern Europe. In Germany and in northern European countries, there is much more distance. And uh, family members might live apart and see each other only once a year. So that, of course, leads to younger people, when they get the infection, it's much harder for them to spread it to their grandparents. And it's, um, according to all the studies, it's mostly the older people who die in disproportionate numbers. So the social distancing that everyone is talking about now in Germany, um, between the younger and the older generations, it's been happening for a long time. Thank you, Bijan. And Max, before we wrap this up, uh, we, we, we uh, started the story with the fact that there were protesters out there in the streets of uh, Germany basically resisting, uh, you know, these uh, stringent measures to be reimposed. My question to you, we've also seen it, seen it in the States. There's actually, uh, you know, a grassroots movement of people that are really against, they're just frustrated and fed up. And a lot of people don't really believe the government's uh, uh, basic uh, narrative that these are necessary, these measures to contain spread. They, a lot of people are stuck in this herd immunity, uh, uh, whatever, angle of the things and think that people need to get infected faster so we can get well faster. But my question to you, over uh, in your neck of the woods in Italy, how are Italians, when it comes to the government imposed lockdowns, are, are, how receptive are they or are they also pushing back at times? Look, social tension is definitely on the rise here in Italy and it's been on the rise for a while. Uh, we've, we've had protests uh, for, for days. Uh, the major ones, the biggest ones, were recorded in Naples, uh, in Rome. But th there's protests uh, on a daily basis happening, uh, particularly in the Italian capital. Uh, there's protests organized that by, by people who are worried to lose their job, po protests organized by people who have a very precarious work under a very precarious uh, contract. Uh, people who are worried about the health situation, people uh, who we call them um, negationists, people who negate the existence uh, of the pandemic. So we have uh, de small and, and, and larger protests happening here in Italy on a daily basis. And of course, there are also those, uh, and there are the majority, who believe the government is uh, doing what uh, it's needed to counter uh, the, the coronavirus pandemic. Thank you, Max. And Bijan, we have about 40 seconds left. Your uh, final thoughts, please. Well, it's a similarly uh, difficult mixture and volatile mixture in, in Germany with the protests. And I have to add to that, there are some far-right extremists who are trying to use those demonstrations um, to influence their goals. And of course, the majority of the people demonstrating are people who are impacted by the measures right now. For example, uh, people who build up a restaurant and their whole livelihood is tied up in that restaurant, which is closed. So from a human perspective, it's understandable that they're in the streets. But of course, the majority of the population thinks that this virus is a serious threat. And so serious measures are in order. What isn't it okay is that the government has promised money to those people, but it hasn't paid out a single dime so far. 
Gentlemen, I wish you both be safe. Thank you both for joining us on the program. Max Chivili from Rome and Mr. Bijan Tavasudi joining us from Hamburg. And uh, viewers, that's a wrap for this segment of your Press TV News Review. Thank you for tuning in and goodbye for now.